If I say the word farmer, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, many people might think of something like this. Or not. There we go. <laughs> Usually a white man out in the boonies with sweat and brow, and of course, a bitch. <laughs> of course, a bitch fork. But it's uncommon that this word in America makes you think of things like this. <laughs> we have people of all backgrounds and walks of life working together to grow food. I work for an organization called Farmer Frog, and that's what we do. We work to grow communities alongside food, because food is a cultivator of community. I've been working for them for the past 10 years now, and yes, surprisingly so, I am a teenager. I'm mate, like a latte. I'm 18 years old. I was basically raised by this organization. My mother is the founder. My father works tirelessly alongside her. So this work is quite literally my life. Well, there's a little bit of a picture, but it's basically me because this is the world I grew up in. This is how I was raised. As I was growing up, I didn't think all the things we did were all that important. All I cared about was playing Minecraft and making my little picture books. I was actually embarrassed because as far as I knew, I was the only kid who had come from a family of farmers. It wasn't until I was 13 that I saw its impact. I was working at Getchell High School up in Marysville, and a kid came to us, and he was skin and bones. He asked us if he could take some of the food home. We not only told him yes, but also gave him seeds. And he cried with joy because now he could go home and grow his own food. This is the reality that we live in, where people cry after getting seeds. And the truly sad thing is that these aren't isolated cases. Millions of children are hungry and starving, and are looking the other way, distracting ourselves with what's going on in other countries, which, don't get me wrong, is also very important. But we can't address those while ignoring what's going on in our own backyards, the struggles that our people go through every day. After my realization, I came to believe that the only way I can make a difference, was if I work to take the reins on the organization, if one day I become the executive director of Farmer Frog. My parents, they wanted me to explore my own passions, you know? I was working on Minecraft animations, trying to build things in games, and fiddling with story ideas, but I thought to myself, how can I change the world with my art? After all, I'm not that talented. So I studied plants, and I learned about the different layers and trees, so I could go into risk assessment. I tried memories in their biology, their needs. I took this class and that class. It was hard considering I was barely interested, but I saw how hard my mother worked and was calling her secretary in the car rides, writing email after email after email. I'd come to believe that the only way I could make a difference was if I took her spot. I felt as it was my moral obligation because few people had the opportunities I did to do so. I was on my way towards a leading role in a highly impactful organization. I was learning how to organize work parties, how to talk to politicians, try and force change. I learned how to talk to schools, colleges, universities. My life had the perfect runway. So then why is it today, of all days, that I'm not talking about the food crisis in America? Well, last year I tore my ACL. I was on crutches for three months, and I was laying in bed for a large part of that. I lost 20 pounds, and not in a healthy way, mind you. I was really in bad shape. And earlier that year, a friend of mine told me how going through something I didn't want wouldn't help anyone, let alone myself, because I don't care about plants. I don't care about their biology. That's why I'd forgotten most of what I learned, and why it was so hard for me to learn to begin with. 
And on top of that, my brother even made a comment not long after about how influential our films are. He even suggested to me that maybe I could try that. But I was against it because, again, I felt like I wasn't meant to do it, that it wasn't my place. My whole life up to this point had been with the intent of working for the people because of the position my family held and all the connections I had to make genuine changes, I felt as though I wasn't allowed to go off and do what I wanted to do. I always told myself my dreams would be a fun little thing I could do after retirement. In the meantime, I had to work day and night in a job that I didn't like, because that was the only way I could make a difference. My life had been a constant blur of work, study, sleep, and then work again, only with commercial breaks of playing sports, training martial arts, and then gaming. But after my surgery, I was forced to slow down and take a second. I had to come to terms with the fact that all of my studying and hard work had been in the wrong direction. But what else was I supposed to do? I'm running out of ideas of what work I could do and be happy doing, I thought back to 11 year old me. Back then, everywhere I went and everything I did revolved around my want and dream to tell stories. I told stories about massive mechanical worms wrote storylines spanning centuries, even played with the idea of making humanity the evil force in the universe, while the aliens were the heroes. So I thought, maybe rather than telling fictional stories I came up with, what if instead I told authentic stories that addressed the real struggles of today? On October 8th, 2018, there was a report released by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And so today, it stated that we have 12 years to make the needs it stated that we have 12 years to make the changes in the environment, but the world as we know it is gone. This is the reality that we're facing. This is what our generation has to deal with. We don't have much time for lollygagging or enjoying our 20s or taking the load off for a few years. Because unless we fix this, children of today might not live past their 30s. So now what I'm working towards is releasing films that inspire activism and empower people to take action while donating as much as profit as possible in organizations and movements around the country, because this is my way. This is my path. This is what my passion has led me to. Not within the food crisis in America, but in telling stories that invoke action. When we're kids, we're commonly taught away from what we love. Don't draw, you don't be hired as an artist. Don't dance, you want to be hired as a dancer. Don't do this, don't do that. Just focus on the math, the language, the history. You'll use that in life. You'll get a job in that. But we live in a world of innovation. It's only by doing what we love can we make the changes that are needed. What we should be saying isn't, don't do what you love because you'll never be good at it, but don't do what you hate because you'll never be happy doing it. How can you enact real change if you're half asleep the whole time, in a constant daze because you felt the need to choke your true passions? We know what passions do to people when they're able to follow them or do it as a hobby. We know children can go on and on and on about a subject, and then, well, the next week, of course, it's a different one. Our passions are a part of who we are. They define our excitements, our joys, our interests. They enable us to work without the need of some third-party pressure telling us to. In our passions, we are able to bring about the most simply because we want to. We don't have to be amazing what excites us, because being excited is all we really need. There's even research to show that our happiness and wellness is directly correlated to our workflow. Happiness and productivity by the University of Warwick is a research paper that was done in 2015. And it states that there's a 12% increase in productivity amongst workers when they're happy in supportive environments, opposed to a 10% decrease when they're unhappy and not supportive. But the environments we are in is so much more than what's going on around us. We are subject to the environments inside us just the same. And if we are able to harness our passions and interlace them into our work and our lives, however that may look, then maybe the job that's means to an end can still be its own little playground. This may seem as though it has nothing to do with what I stated earlier. How does being passionate about our work help us with climate change, or even other issues that are befalling us? Well, the disasters we are seeing, and the massive amount of work that's needed to be done we as a society need every edge we can get to try and solve this problem. And if we push for a passionate change in how we choose to face this problem, we will be able to work faster, harder, more creatively, 
And we'll be able to accomplish things we previously thought were impossible. Because change is coming whether we like it or not. The world can't stay the same as it is. That's how we ended up where we are in the first place. The real question is, can we make the change a good one? Thank you.